Pastor 2021. All right. All praise to the most high God. Um, mm. Okay. We're going to open up with the book of Judges. All right. We're going to open up with the book of Judges. Judges chapter 5, verse 11. We're going to open up with that. The book of Judges chapter 5, verse 11. Okay, let's read that. Judges chapter 5, verse 11. The book of Judges chapter 5, verse 11. Come on. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. It says, They that are delivered from the noise of archers. Who is the they that are delivered from the noise of archers? This is future prophecy. It's talking about the children of Israel that will be delivered from the noise of archers. An archer, what is that? He's not talking about a regular bow and arrow. No, he's talking about a missile. Because we would be in the land, we would be in captivity, and the people that would have us in captivity, they would have nuclear capability. So that's what this is talking about. It says, they that are delivered from the noise of archers. This has not happened yet. It's yet to happen. Okay, read. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water. In the places of drawing water. The places of drawing water is the place of slavery. That's where we are now. Come on. There they shall there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. He says, There, in the land of our captivity, we shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. That is what we're doing right now. We're rehearsing the righteous acts. What is one of those righteous acts? Passover. Passover. So we are commanded to observe the feast of the Passover. It's a law required for every Israelite man, woman, and child. Our children need to know about the Passover. They need to know the glorious thing that the Lord did for us when we were delivered out of the land of Egypt. You understand? Not, um, not about the history of, 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 of what our people or of the nations did to us, because we learn about Jan Fadribek, we learn about Napoleon. No, to help with that, we must learn about what the Lord did for us when we were delivered out of the land of Egypt, from the hands of Pharaoh, from captivity. That is what our children need to grow up knowing. Okay, read that again, verse 7. Judges of the Bible slave. Come on. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, uh -huh. they shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, uh -huh. even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Read. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gate. The people of the Lord will go down to the gate. What is the gate? Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 16. Okay. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Watch this. Uh, give me Deuteronomy chapter six. Give me Deuteronomy 16 verse 18 first. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 18. Okay. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 18. Come on. Judges and officers shall thou make shall thou make thee in all thy gates. So it says, judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates. So who are those judges and officers to talk about the leaders? The two brothers, the leaders of Israel, okay? You are the judges and officers of Israel. You are the leaders that the Lord is raising up this day. He says, shall thou make thee in all thy gates. The gates is talk about the leadership. That's what he's talking about. Okay, read that part again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 18. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God given thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. They shall what? And they shall judge the people with just judgment. They shall judge the people with just judgment. So, that is what we're going over. So, when it says the gate, is talking about the leaders of Israel, the judges, the leadership, those that the Lord is raising up to do what, to guide the people, to teach them the laws of God. That is what we're reading here. Okay, go back to where was that? Judges of the Bible is living. Come on. They that are delivered from the noise of archers uh -huh. in the places of drawing water, Read. there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. You see that thing? So now, what Deborah was, our foremother Deborah was saying here, she was in the spirit. You understand? What would happen to us in the last days? That's what we had now, in the last days, in the land of our captivity, serving our prison sentence. 
Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Because the Apostle Paul reminded us of the same thing. Okay, the same thing that we read in Judges is the same thing that we're going to read here. Judges 2, verse 11. Bring that. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Uh -huh. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. All men of Israel. Come on. Teaching us that. Denying ungodliness uh -huh. and worldly lust, come on. We should live soberly, uh -huh. righteously, and godly in this present world. We must live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Guess what we are doing? Rehearsing the righteous acts. That's why it says we should live soberly, righteously, rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord in the land of our captivity. That's what he's talking about. Saying the same thing that we read in Judges. The same thing. Okay, give me First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6. The Apostle Paul throughout the scriptures is reminding us that we need to observe the feasts of the Lord, the righteous acts of the Lord in this present world. You understand? The same present world that was back then, during the time of our forefathers and foremothers, the time of the judges, we are doing the same thing in this present world. Bible on the great. Okay, First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6. Read them. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6. Come on. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What is that leaven? Sin. That's why the Lord, the Most High God, commanded us to get rid of the leaven out of our houses. Because that, us doing it physically, is actually going into what? Spiritual. Our spiritual houses must be kept clean, holy, acceptable to the Most High God. That is what we are reading. Read that again, verse 6. First Corinthians 5 verse 6. Come on. Your glory is not good. Uh -huh. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Next verse. Purge out therefore the old leaven. That's a commandment right there. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Get rid of your former sins. Read. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Uh -huh. That ye may be a new lump. You are commanded, all of us, every man, woman, in here, and children, were commanded to purge out their old leaven. That we may be a new lump. That is the commandment here. Read. That ye may be a new lump. Come on. As ye are unleavened. Uh -huh. as, ye, as ye are what? As ye are unleavened. As you are clean. As you are made clean by the blood of Christ. Read. As ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Because when Christ died, he was the Passover lamb. You understand? He was the Passover lamb. So even Christ, our Passover, he is our Passover. You understand? Was sacrificed for us. Read. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Let us what? Let us keep the peace. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? Therefore, let us keep the feast. Meaning what? Observe the feast of the Passover in this present world. Observe it. Apply it. Teach it to your children, he says. Read. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with all living. Not with all living. He's going to tell you, he's going to get more specific of what he's talking about. Come on. Neither with the living of malice. You see that thing? He's giving examples now of what is that living. Malice. Malicious intent. Okay, evil, rain. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. The, the, the leaven of malice and wickedness. Come on. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You see that thing? With the unleavened bread of sincerity and in truth. Watch this. Before we get there, give me the book of 1 Peter 2, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Remember, he said, Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Read that. First Peter 2 verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. He said, laying aside all malice. We are commanded to lay aside all malice. Malicious intent. You understand? An intent to do harm to your brother, to your sister. Read. Laying aside all malice and all guile. And all guile. Bitterness. Come on. And hypocrisy. And hypocrisy. Read. And envies. And envies. Envying one another. Come on. And all evil speaking. And all evil speaking. Murmuring and complaining. That is what the Apostle Paul is commanding us to do then. That's how we get rid of that old level of malice and wickedness. 
the Apostle Peter is getting into the details of what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Read. As you will be as a newborn babe, meaning what? As ye are unleavened. Come on. Desire the sincere milk of the word. You must desire the sincere milk of the word. Come on. That ye may grow the body. That you may grow the body. Go back to where it was at. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Uh -huh. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us what? Let us keep the feast. Let us keep the feast. Come on. Not with old leaven. Not with old leaven. Come on. Neither with the leaven of malice uh -huh. and wickedness. Malice and wickedness. That's what we learned in First Peter 2, verse 1. Great. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Because we are here to serve the most high God in sincerity and in truth. Give me John chapter 4. Okay, give me the John, the John, the fourth chapter. John chapter 4 and verse 23. The book of John chapter 4 verse 23. Come on. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Come on. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. You see what Christ is saying right there? He says, but the hour cometh. What hour is there? That's where we end now. That's the hour he's talking about. Now, the last days. You understand? But the hour cometh, come on, and what? And now is, read. And now is. Uh -huh. And now is when the true worshippers. When the what? When the true worshippers. When the true worshippers. So you brothers and sisters, you are those true worshippers. Read. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. What's the spirit? The spirit of Christ. The truth, the laws of God. Great. In spirit and in truth, for the Father seeking such to worship him. The Lord, that's what he's looking for. He's looking for those that are going to worship him in sincerity and in truth. Next verse. God is the spirit. Uh -huh. And they that worship him must Worship him in spirit and in truth. That's the same thing that the Apostle Paul said. We need to understand this thing. Everything that the Apostle Paul said, what the, our foremother Deborah said, listen, is to what's what? Is what's to bear him of the nation of Israel. Because right now, we are in captivity, but the most said God has had mercy upon us. He's given us the chance to rehearse the righteous acts, to apply the laws of God, to observe the feast of the Passover, to put in remembrance what the Lord did for us. Because Israel, we have selective amnesia. That is the problem with Israel. We have selective amnesia. We forget the glorious things that the Lord did for us. That's why it's so easy for us to mama and complain. Give me that in Numbers chapter 11 verse 1. Okay? There is why the most, the most I don't like the complaining spirit. Numbers chapter 11 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Numbers chapter 11 verse 1. Come on. And when the people complain, when the people did what? And when the people complain, when the people complain, the most I don't like that thing. He hates a grimy spirit. Pray. It displeased the Lord. It did what? It displeased the Lord. The most I God is not pleased with the brother and or sister that is complaining. The Lord is not pleased with them. He says when the people complain, it displeased the Lord. Because guess what happened when we was in the wilderness? Our men and women started to complain. They started to mama. They started to be evil of Moses and Aaron. And the leaders that the Moses and God has set up under Moses and Aaron. That's the same spirit today. We need to get rid of the spirit. Okay? Read that part again. And when the people did what? And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. It displeased the Moses and God. What did the Lord do? Next verse. Next part of the verse. Come on. And the Lord heard it. Uh -huh. And his anger was killed. You see what happens when we complain? When we complain, the anger of the Lord is kindled against us. When we complain, the anger of the Lord is gets kindled against us. You can get men and women and children killed because of a murmuring and complaining spirit. That's a dangerous thing in Islam. That's a dangerous thing in the sight of the Most High God. That thing got to stop in Islam. I don't want to hear complaining and murmuring. When captivity, the reason why we're at the bottom is because of us. We did this. You understand? We did this to ourselves. We did this to ourselves. We did this thing. So our job is to humble down to what this Bible says. The most of God, he has given us mercy in this land. Wherever we are scattered, all the children of Israel on this day, guess what we are doing? Keeping the commandment. What is that commandment this day? Observing the feast of the Passover. Remember the glorious thing that the Lord did for us. 
You understand? So our job is to teach you brothers, you better make sure that the sisters, they like to complain. Brothers too. So your job is when you hear brother complain, you better shut it down. Okay? Hear brother mumbling and come shut it down quick. Because if you don't, read that part again, verse 11, verse 1 again. Numbers of the 11 verse 1. Come on. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. Right. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. Right. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them. You see what the Lord did? And the fire of the Lord burned among them. Right. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. You see what the Lord did in the camp? The Lord walks among our camp. The most high God is expecting us for the camp to be clean and be made holy. That is what the most high God is commanding. From every man, woman, and child, the whole camp must be holy because the Lord walks among our camp to make sure that the camp is clean. You understand? That's why it says, get rid of the leaven. Why? Because the most high God must walk among us so we may be prosperous in our journey in this truth. That is what the Lord wants. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 20. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse. Let me see, let me see. Deuteronomy chapter 19. Deuteronomy, sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 9. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 9. If thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy 23. It's not in my notes. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 14. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 14. Uh -huh. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp. You see what the Bible is saying? The most high God walks in the midst of our camp. Read. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp. Come on. To deliver thee. To do what? To deliver thee. To deliver us from the lands of our captivity. Read. And to give up thy enemies before thee. And to give up our enemies before us. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That is what we are seeing here. Read. And to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be home, that he, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. You see what the Lord does when he sees an unclean thing among us? He turns away from us. So guess what we must do? We must keep the tent, the camp holy. One of the things that Moses dealt with in the wilderness for 40 years was grimy Negroes. Black men and black men complaining about Moses. You understand? So me, when I hear stuff like that, I don't want to hear that nonsense. Why? Because the reason why we are in this mess is because of the mouth, the tongue. You understand? Give me James 3. Give me that thing. Give me the book of James chapter 3. Okay? James chapter 3 and verse 6. Watch this. Start at verse 5. James 3 verse 5. The book of James chapter 3 verse 5. Come on. Even so, the tongue is a little member. The tongue is a little member. Come on. And boasted great things. And boasted great things, man, speaking evil. Right. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. You see that thing? Because of what? One person complaining, everybody else is going to catch that thing because they are all moving in the same spirit. They all want to murmur and complain. Right. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. You see what the tongue is? The world. The tongue is a world of sin, the world of iniquity. Right. So is the tongue among your members. So, so is the what? So is the tongue among our members. You see what the Bible is saying? So is the tongue among our members. The members of the congregation murmuring and complaining. The most high God don't like that thing. You understand? Right. So is the tongue among our members that it divided the whole body. Because that tongue is going to defile everybody up in here. We cannot let that thing happen. Because when we let that stuff like that go, what type of man would we be that the Lord is not going to deal with us? We want the most high God to deal with us. We want the Lord to deliver us out of the hands of our captivity. We want to go home. You understand? This is not a gift. We want to go back home. Right. Then it defiled the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature. You see that thing? It, caught, it set on fire the course of nature. Meaning what? The nature of things change. It changes time and space. The time. Very dangerous creature, rain. And it is set on fire of hell. You see that thing? Fire of hell. Guess where we end now? In hell. In captivity. You understand? 
Now, give me the book of Second Ezra now, chapter 3, verse 13. Second Ezra. With your book. Second Ezra, chapter 3. Verse 13, read that. Second Ezra, 3, verse 13. Come on. Now, when they live so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. That's our forefathers that the Lord made a covenant with for our sins. Read. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will. Because the most of God showed the will, his will, unto whom? Our forefather Abraham. Read. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldst never forsake his seed. Thou will never do what? Promising him that thou wouldst never to will never forsake his seed. He promised Abraham that he would never forsake us. We are the seed of Abraham. Give me that in uh, Isaiah 41, verse 8. We are the seed of Abraham. So the Lord promised, he promised our forefather Abraham that he would not forsake his seed. Okay, we are the seed of Abraham this day. That's why we are up in here. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. Come on. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. The seed of Abraham, my friend. We are the seed of Abraham. We was promised that the Lord promised our forefather Abraham that he would not forsake his seed. That this is the evidence of them. The Lord not forsaking his seed. Okay? Go back to where he was at. Second Ezra 3. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 15. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. And made an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldst never forsake his seed. Right. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac thou gavest Jacob and Esau. Come on. As for Jacob, thou, thou didst choose him to thee, right. and put him by Esau. Meaning what? He rejected Esau, come on. And so Jacob became a great multitude. Because we became a great multitude. We are Jacob. We are the great multitude. We cannot be measured nor numbered. Right. Verse 17. Come on. And it came to pass that when thou ledest his seed out of Egypt. When thou did what? And it came to pass that when thou ledest his seed out of Egypt. That's what we're going to go over. Because the most high God delivered us out of the hand of the Egyptians, the Pharaohs. So that's what Ezra is, is rehashing the history. Read that part again. When thou did what? And that when thou ledest his seed out of Egypt, uh -huh. thou broughtest them up to the Mount Sinai. Come on. And bowing the heavens, thou didst set, set fast the earth, moved the whole world, and madest the devils to tremble. Come on. And troubles the men of that age. And troubles the men of that age. Because what the Lord did back then, listen, is still spoken of this day. Books are written about it. You understand what the Lord did. Although Israel is trying to disprove the Bible, but he knows the Bible is a true book. Because everything that they try to disprove, they can find evidence of them with their archaeological digs and all that. But they troubled the men of that age. It troubled the scientists of that age up to this very day. You understand? Give me Second Ezra chapter one verse ten. Second Ezra chapter one verse ten. The Most High God delivered us out of the hand of the Egyptians, and when He did that, the nations they were in awe. Up to this very day, the nations are still in awe that we are still alive this day. Read what you got. Second Ezra one verse ten. Second Ezra the one verse ten. Come on. Many kings have been destroyed for their sakes. Many kings have the Lord destroyed for our sakes. Because of what? The promise that he made with our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. Pharaoh, with his servants and all his power, have I smitten down. You see that thing? We went over this, okay? He's giving the specifics of the king that he destroyed. He's just giving an example of what he did, for, what he did to the Egyptians for our sakes. You understand? And that's what we're going to go over this day. Go ahead. All the nations have been destroyed before thee, mm -hmm. and in the east have I scattered the people of two provinces. Come on. Even Tyrus and Zidon. Tyre and Zidon is talking about the Canaanites, the Hamites. Right. And have slain all their enemies. Come on. Speak thou therefore unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I led you through the sea, and in the beginning gave you a large and sea passage. The sea is the what? The Red Sea. Come on. I gave you Moses for a leader. I did what? I gave you Moses for a leader. Because in every captivity, the Lord always does that. 
He always sets up leaders to guide and teach the people. And guess what happens? As a leader, you cannot be emotional. Leaders cannot be emotional. Leaders cannot be in their feelings. Okay? As a leader, you cannot entertain gossip. You cannot entertain murmuring and complainers. You brothers, you, when you are the new upcoming leaders, you must not entertain them. But I'm seeing that spirit of murmuring and complaining in you brothers. That needs to stop. Because that means you're not ready to be a leader. You're not ready to lead your people out of captivity. You understand? This is not the Christian church. This is the nation of Israel where men are set in order because the nation is waiting for us to get ourselves in order. Read that again. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 13. Come on. I led you to the sea and in the beginning gave you a lot in safe passage. Right. I gave you Moses for a leader. Come on. And Aaron for a priest. Because guess what they did? They disrespected Moses and Aaron. Guess who, 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 who were they disrespecting? Were they disrespecting Moses and Aaron? No. They were disrespecting the majesty on high. That's why men and women were put to death. You understand? None of the women made it out. You know, it's only the children. You see the children you see here? They are the ones that made it into the, into the promised land. The women like this, they were all they were put to death. And out of the men, only two men were delivered. Caleb and Joshua. The rest put to death. The children are the ones that made it into the promised land. Guess what? Well, this is the last days. You understand? This is the last days. We went back to the wilderness to rehearse the righteous acts in the wilderness to be put to the test. That's what's coming. So the question you have to ask yourself, are you wilderness ready? You have to ask yourself this question. Are you wilderness ready? So that you can be ready for the wilderness. Because the most high God is going to what? He's going to put us through test. He's going to what? He's going to teach us again. And guess what? After he teaches us again, then we're going to be left in the wilderness to do what? To apply what we've been taught now that our eyes are opened. Guess what? You will always, you still going to have those black ashy demons, black men, black women, that are still going to go off. Still, that's still going to happen. Don't get it twisted. After everything that we've been taught when the Lord opened our eyes and all that and our ears, you're still going to have black ashy demons, Jezebels and Ahabs in the wilderness. You're still going to get them. You understand? Read again. Verse 13. Sikines, which is the one who says, Come on. I led you through the sea, and in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. Read. I gave you Moses for a leader, uh -huh. and Aaron for a priest. Watch this. Give me that in Sarah. Give me Ecclesiastes 45 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 45 and verse 1. We're still dealing with our forefather Moses. You understand? He was a glorious man in the sight of the Most High God. So we must, we must go into the scriptures to see what the Lord used him for to deliver our people out of captivity. Isaiah, come in, Sarah, 45 verse 1. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, 45 verse 1. Come on. And he brought out of him a merciful man. Out of him, the him is Jacob. So Moses was brought out of Jacob from the tribe of Levi. Ray. Which found favor in the sight of all flesh. What did he do? Which found favor in the sight of all flesh. All this, give me that in Proverbs chapter 3. He says he found favor in the sight of all flesh. Proverbs chapter 3, let's start at verse 5. Let me see, let me see. Start at verse 4. Proverbs 3, verse 4. Read that. Proverbs 3 verse 4. Come on. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Read that part again. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 4. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. The reason why you're going to find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man, read verse 1. Proverbs 3 verse 1. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. My son. Forget not my law. What did he say? My son, forget not my law. He says, forget not my law. Don't forget the laws of God. That is the stipulation. That is the, that is what? That is the objective. That is the requirement right there. Forget not what? Forget not my law. Forget not my law. Read. But let thine heart keep my commandments. He says, let your heart keep the commandments of the most high God. Now read verse 4 again now. Proverbs 3 verse 4. Come on. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You see that thing? Because Moses, they say, he was the weakest man on earth. He was not the weakest, the meekest. He humbled himself down 
to receive the laws of God for Israel's sake. You understand? He fasted twice. He did 40 days and 40 nights. Guess what Israel did? They went the hell off. What did Moses do? He had to go again and do it again. For who? For Israel's sake. Guess what they was doing to Moses? Disrespecting the man. You understand? And guess what? All the prophets are back this day. All the prophets are back. So when I hear Mamari complaining, you don't know who, who's who. How do you know? You don't know who's who. So when I hear murmuring and complaint, you have no idea who you are murmuring against because you don't know who's who. The prophets are back. You could be speaking against Abraham next year. You could be speaking against King David. How do you know? You could be speaking against um, uh, Sister Judith. How do you know? You don't know. That's why we need to be very, very careful how we deal with one another. Very, very careful. That is the reason why the Most High God brought forth judgment in the wilderness. The earth opened, it swallowed men and women up. Because of what? They were not in the spirit. They were not in the spirit. Okay? Go back to Sarah 45 and 1. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, the 45 is 1. Read. And he brought out of him a merciful man uh -huh. which found favor in the sight of all flesh. Read. Even Moses. Indeed, Moses. That's Moses, the merciful man. Okay, come on. Beloved of God and men, whose memorial is blessed. You see that thing? Moses' memorial, meaning what? His reputation is blessed because he found favor in the Son of the Most High God, and the Lord used him to deliver the children of Israel out of captivity. Right? He made him like to the glorious saints. He did what? He made him. Like to the glorious saints. He made Moses like to the glorious saints. Because Moses' meekness represents the glorious the gloriousness of the saints. Because the, 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 the way that he the, how meek he was is how the Lord wanted us to be. To follow that example. Same thing that Moses did, same thing that Christ did. Christ he showed us how to walk. So we follow his example. You understand? The same thing that our forefathers did in the past, they were following the example of Christ because Christ, the Spirit of Christ, was working in those men and our foremothers that walked that walked according to this Bible. You understand? Right. And magnified uh -huh. so that his enemies stood in fear of him. Because at this point it was talking about who? Pharaoh. In the wilderness, it was talking about who? The Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Amorites. You understand? The Canaanites that were to kick out the land. You understand? Ray. By his words, he caused the wonders to cease. Come on. And he made him glorious in the sight of King. He says, by his word, he says, by his words, he caused the wonders to cease. What was the wonders? Because the most High God was checking us up in the wilderness. If you read the book of Numbers. What was going on? He sent poisonous snakes against us. Men and women was dropping dead. Moses had to speak to the Lord, you know what, to stop the poisonous thing. It was because of Moses' meekness that Moses, the Lord, was able to hug him. If Moses was not a meek man, the, the Lord wasn't going to listen to nothing. There was a plague in Israel. Guess what happened? Moses and Aaron had to speak to the Most High God to stop the plague. Men and women were dropping dead. They were literally running in the camp. You understand? The plague moving like a shadow over the nation of Israel. If the shadow touches you, everybody was dropping dead. Men, women, and children. Out of them, they have to be literally running to block the plague from killing everybody else. That's how much they love the people. But guess what? The people still complain. Because under Moses, we had a lot of mercy under Moses. Christ, listen, Christ, he don't play games. That's why in the wilderness we was doing some wicked stuff. That's why there's child-proof laws in the Bible. Men and women are having sex, guess what happens? Moses had to go to the Lord. What do we do in this situation? Okay. The Lord says, okay, you must make sure that you marry the sister. But that wasn't supposed to happen. You understand? When Christ came, he said, no, no, mm -mm. no, you can marry, that's it. You understand? Under Moses, we got, we, got, we got away with a lot of stuff under Moses in the wilderness. We got away with a lot of stuff. Okay? Under Christ, there's no room for that thing. Because this is the last captivity. 
Okay, great. Let's try again. Ecclesiastes 45 verse 3. Come on. By his words, he caused the wonders to cease. Rain. And he made him glorious in the sight of kings. Come on. And gave him a compartment for his people. And showed him part of his glory. And showed him part of his glory. He showed Moses. He showed Moses his back parts. You can read about it in Exodus 33. Come on. He sanctified him in faithfulness and meekness. Uh -huh. And chose him out of all men. You see what the Lord did? He chose Moses out of all men of Israel. Right. He made him to hear his voice and brought him into the dark cloud. The dark cloud when the Lord was giving Moses the secret of time. Right. And gave him commandments before his face. Come on. Even the law of life and knowledge that he might teach Jacob his covenant. That he might teach Jacob his covenant. Remember, this is the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus. This is during the time of the Greeks. This was written. Okay? But Sirach is saying covenant. Covenant plural. Sirach was prophesying about what? The new covenant that's also going to come when the Lord comes. You understand? Which we are under now. Right. That he might teach Jacob his covenant. Uh -huh. And Israel his judgment. And the children of Israel his judgment. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Exodus now, chapter 1. Exodus 1, verse 1. Exodus chapter 1, verse 1. The book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 1. Read. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came to Egypt. Every man in his house, in his household, came to Jacob. So now this is when our forefather Jacob came into Egypt because there was a famine. Read. Ruby, Simeon. Levi and Judah, uh -huh. Issachar, Zebulon and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls. How many souls? Were seventy souls. Right. For Joseph was in Egypt already. Joseph was already in Egypt because Joseph was sold by his brothers because they were envious of him. They hated jo they hated Joseph. You understand? They sold him. That's what happened. Okay, and guess what? When they sold Jake Joseph, that was against the law, by the way, because the law says if you send your brother, what is the judgment? Death. So we had messed back then. Because when the 11 brothers sold their brother, what happened? Did they get put to death? No. So we got, we got away with a lot of stuff in the wilderness. You understand? Under Moses, that's what happened. So remember, Moses is writing Genesis, he's rehashing the history. You understand? Because Moses did not even live in that history that he wrote in Genesis. He didn't even live in that history. That's when he went into, into a dark cloud, the Lord showing him the secrets of time. Okay? Okay, read that again. Verse 7. Read, read verse 5 now. Exodus 1 5. Come on. And all the souls that came out of the Lord of Jacob were seventy souls. Right. For Joseph was in Egypt already. Come on. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. Come on. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and was exceeding mighty. Uh -huh. And the land was filled with them. And the land was filled with us. We was mighty. Guess what? Same thing going on today. We outnumber all nations in captivity. Especially during the corona, there's going to be a lot of babies coming out. You understand? Come on. We're seven. Uh -huh. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and, in, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now yeah. there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Read that again, verse 8. Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Come on. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, uh -huh. which knew not Joseph. He says, there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. So this king, because when you look at the Egyptian history, right, there's different dynasties that you read about. From the first one all the way up to the time when we was in Egypt. So at this point in verse 8, he took about the new kingdom which is called the 18th dynasty. That's the new kingdom. 
Okay? Under Amos the first. Amos the first was, he was the one that rose up, that knew not Joseph. Meaning all the things that Joseph did during the famine, when everybody was lacking and Egypt had plenty because of Joseph, by the help of the Most High God, yes, he disregarded all of that, what Joseph did. You understand? Read that again, verse 8. Exodus of the 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Okay, so now give me that book from Babylon to Timber 2. Give me page 63. Okay, you're going to read that highlighted part. The book Babylon from Babylon to Timber 2. So we're going to go into this book to go into the king that rose up that knew not Joseph. Let's see what the historical context teaches us. Read that. The book of Babylon. From Babylon to Timbuk 2 uh -huh. by Rudolf R. Wisdom. Come on. Page 63. Read. The new kingdom or new empire. The new kingdom or the new empire. That's the 18th dynasty. Read. Much proof points to the fact that the new pharaoh who ascended the throne was Amos the first. Was who? Was Amos the first. Amos the first is the, is the king that ascended the throne during the 18th dynasty. He is the king that ascended the throne during the 18th dynasty, Amos the first, because his grandfather was Kamos, the one that expelled the Hyksos out of Egypt during the end of the 17th dynasty. So during the end of the 18th, the 17th dynasty, Kamos, he is the one that expelled the Hyksos out of Egypt. Amos the first was the king of the 18th dynasty. Write that down. Amos the first. A H M O S E the first. Amos the first. He was the king of the Pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. Okay, go back to the scriptures now. Okay. Um, actually, could you go to Wikipedia real quick? Okay. Um, just um, type on Google um, the 18th dynasty Pharaohs. 18th dynasty Pharaohs. So I want you brothers and sisters to look at the screen to see the, the pharaohs that was during the time of the 18th dynasty. What we're reading in Exodus chapter 1 verse 8, when it says there arose up a new king of Egypt with new not chosen. Because they are the ones that oppress us with much wicked oppression. Okay? Let me see that. Oh, praises. So what I want to show you is that is all the empires, I mean all the pharaohs that ruled during the 18th dynasty, which is what we are reading in Exodus chapter 1 verse 8, okay? The 18th dynasty. So just look at the screen, okay, it's coming up, it's clearing up, right? That's it right there, all praise to the whole side. That's it right there. Read Exodus 1 verse 8. The book of Exodus 1 verse 8. Now there arose up a new king of Egypt. That's it, that's it. Leave it there, leave it there. Okay, thank you. Exodus 1 verse 8, read that. Exodus 1 verse 8. Come on. Now there arose up a new king of Egypt, which knew not Joseph. So the, the new king that rose up in, in Egypt, which knew not Joseph, that's Amos the first. Okay? So don't, don't worry about the days, because the days, they are always different if you look at different um, historical references. The dates are always off. So just focus on the dynasties, okay? The second was, was Amenhotep the first, okay? And then you've got Thutmose the first, all right? Uh, Thutmose the second, uh, scroll down. Okay, that, you see that one? Hatshepsut, Hatshepsut is the first female pharaoh. She was a lesbian, Hatshepsut, Hatshepsut. Okay, that's what they call it, read. Okay, scroll down, Thutmose the third. Okay, these are all the pharaohs of the 18th dynasty. Ray, keep going. That was the fourth. Abinhotep the third. Okay, Abinhotep the fourth. Agnati. Okay, can be there. Okay, okay, go scroll, scroll. Okay, Horeb, uh, Horeb, that was the last one of the 18th dynasty. Because we was in Egypt during the 18th and the 19th dynasty. But Joseph came during the 17th dynasty, during the time of the Hyksos. He, no, he came after the Hyksos, but he knew the history of the Hyksos. Okay? Uh, give, me the eight, give me the 19th dynasty now. The 19th dynasty. 
So I want to show you um, the list of all, the list of the pharaohs of the of the 19th dynasty. You see that Ramses is the first, Sebi the second, Sebi the first, Ramses is the second. We left during the time of Ramses is the second. That's when we left. When Ramses is the second took the throne, that's when we left Egypt. Okay, during the 19th dynasty. All right. Okay, go back to Exodus one verse eight. The book of Exodus, the one verse eight. Come on. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Right. And he said unto his people, Behold, the the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Right. Come now, come on. Let us deal wisely with them. You see what they said. So Pharaoh had a council that says, Come on, let us deal wisely with these people. Let us deal wisely with the children of Israel because they are becoming too they are becoming too much upon the land. They are multiplying too much upon the land. We need to deal wisely with them. That's what he said right there. Read that part again. Exodus one to say, Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass. Then when they fallen out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up. Out of the land. So this is over time. Because over time, because we started to become more and more mightier than them. Although we were slaves, but we became more and mightier because of what? The numbers. You understand? Because of our numbers. So this is over time, over a process of time. This is what happened to us. You understand? Watch this. Um, when you see that part when it says, come on, let us deal wisely with them. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 5, verse 14. This is one of the ways that they, how they dealt wisely with us when we was in Egypt. Exodus chapter 5 verse 14. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 5 verse 14. Come on. And the officers of the children of Israel. And the what? And the officers of the children of Israel. The officers, because when we was in Egypt, there were those of our brothers, those of our brothers that had high positions in Egypt. You understand? They were living better than the rest of the Israelites. You understand? Same thing today. Same thing today. What do they call them? Coons. Okay? They are called coons. They were bought and paid for gift rent. So they cannot help you with nothing. That goes for the pastors, the politicians, and all. The, so the businessmen. Same mentality that we are reading here. Read that again, verse 14. Exodus 5 verse 14. Come on. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters, had set over them. You see what they did? They took certain of our people and gave them key positions to what? To rule over us, to increase the hatred between us. Same thing going on today in the companies. They set up black managers and all that. And the white man or the Chinese, the Japanese, the Arab, they give the command to the black man. He gives the command to the rest of the black men and black women in the company, in the businesses. Guess what? You're always complaining about your manager. You never complain about the one that's giving you instructions. That's what they did in Egypt. You understand? Right. Exodus 5 verse 14. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, Come on. were beaten. Were what? Were beaten. You see what was going on in Egypt? They were really terrorizing us in Egypt. It was bad. You understand? It was worse than you can possibly imagine. Right. Were beaten and demanded. Uh -huh. Wherefore, have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick? Both yesterday and today, as heretofore, you see what they was doing? So you look at the movies that they, obviously, they don't use our people. You understand? The people that are in Egypt is obviously white people. You understand? But, and when we left Egypt, mm. okay, that's for another lesson. Okay, I'll touch on that the next time. Watch this. Give me second mark of chapter 7, verse 24. We are still dealing with how they dealt wisely with us. Because the way they dealt wisely with us in Egypt, they sent our people in key positions to control, to manage the slaves at the bottom. They were getting paid. They were the, by the way, the same people that they sent as taskmasters, they were the main ones that was complaining in the wilderness. They were the ones. They were the main demons that was complaining in the wilderness because they, they were living better than the rest of us in Egypt. So that's why they was complaining to Moses is because that's why they, we remember the fish. But we went, when we were at the bottom, you understand? We was not remembering the fish. We was not remembering the cucumber. No, 
the people that was remembering the fish, the cucumbers and all of that, is those that live large. They live better than the rest of the Israelites. They are the ones that put the, the, the luxury in thought to remember them things. Everyone else didn't have the luxury to do that because we were scary scraps. We were the, we were, we were the field Negroes. They were the house Negroes. Okay? Give me that in 2 Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 24. This is how they dealt wisely with us. So I want to show you that throughout all the captivities from Egypt, they dealt wisely with us by what? By setting our people up to control the rest of their, their people in Egypt. You understand? So same thing, but when we were slaves in Greece, they did the same thing. Watch this. 2 Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 24. So get back this, so the same verse four. Come on. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, right. whilst the youngest was his alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man. You see what he was doing? He was enticing him with what? He was enticing him with, with riches. He said, listen. I'm gonna make you both a rich and a happy man. Watch the next part of the verse. Come on. That he would make him both a rich and a happy man uh -huh. if he would turn from the laws of his fathers. If he would do what? If he would turn from the laws of his fathers. If he would turn from the laws of his fathers. You understand? But he didn't, but today they don't they don't tell you directly. You understand? They will tell you, listen, in this job, you must work on Saturday. That's how they tell you to what? To turn from the laws of your fathers. And they're going to tell you, we're going to give you extra time. That's what they tell you. We're going to give you extra time and all of that. We're going to give you bonuses and all that. All you have to do is just, you must work extra. We must work on Saturdays. You must do that. That is what they were saying. Right. If he would turn from the laws of his fathers, and then also he would take him for his friend and trust him with a faith. You see what he was saying? He would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. The affairs of Greece. That's the same thing going on today. Because they give you some, some responsibilities to make you think that they trust you with the affairs of Babylon. Listen, they will, the, the oppressors will never trust anybody with the affairs of Babylon. That doesn't happen. That does not happen. All of that is just a small screen. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Psalms. Psalms 83, verse 2. Psalms 83, verse 2. Because the same thing that happened in Egypt, it, ha it happened today now in these last days. And King David, he prophesied about that thing. Psalms 83, start of verse 2. The book of Psalms, the 83, verse 2. Come on. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. Our enemies make a tumult, an angry gathering. Okay, come on. And they that hate thee. They that hate thee. They that hate the most like God. Come on. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have lifted up the head as God and Christ, and they say they are the Israelites. Right. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. You see that thing? Come on, let us deal wisely with them. That's how they are dealing wisely with us. This is during what? This is during the time of the Balfour Declaration in 1948. Okay, come on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against the hidden ones. How did they take crafty counsel in his last days? Guess what they did? They put the white people in our land up under the, the Balfour Declaration, which was what? It was drawn up in 1917. 1948, they put them upon the land in 1948. You understand? Three years after World War II. So when we're reading it, that's how they took crafty counsel. That's why they say, come on, let us deal wisely with them. Because they have to come together, sit down, and plan our demise. That's why when we pray, we pray to the most high God to disappoint their crafty and evil devices. Because we are reading about it right here. So the Lord is commanding us to pray for vengeance. We must pray for that thing. Pray. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. You see that thing? Let us take, let us take away their identity, their nationality, where they come from, their book. They are easy. Everything about themselves, take everything from them. So they don't remember who they are. Okay, come on. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's why we don't remember. That's why we don't remember. Because they took crafty counsel against us. 
You understand? Watch this. Now, go back to where was that now? Exodus chapter 1. Exodus 1 verse 10. One more again. The book of Exodus, the one said, Come on. Come on. Let us do what you did. Let us think multiply. And it come to pass that when they pull it out any wall, uh -huh. they join also with our enemies. They join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so give them out of the land. What did he say? Let's do, let, let's do what? And so get them up out of the land. It says, and so get them up out of the land. Brothers, this is what our enemies do. They are afraid when we multiply, they are afraid we're going to join unto their enemies and fight against them. But we're not going to do that. We keep the commandments. The Lord is with us. The Lord said, wait ye upon me. In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8, he says, wait ye upon me. Okay, come on. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. You see that thing? They, they, they set over us taskmasters, our own people over us. Come on. And they put for Pharaoh treasure cities, uh -huh. Python and Ramses. You see that thing? It says they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. You see when you look at these tourists, they go to places like um, the Valley of the Kings. That's where Python and Ramses is found. Because you see that part where it says Ramses, guess what? Moses is writing what? At this point, guess what? At this point, Ramses wasn't born. You understand? So Moses is telling you about what? He's giving you the name of the, the monument that was built by the Israelites. You understand? But he's telling you in the future, this is what's going to happen. Python and Ramses is using the name of the location of what? Of where the pyramids that was built as what? Because they, what they would do is they would create erect statues about themselves. And they will name those statues and museum and monuments after themselves. That's where Esau gets it from. He gets it from Egypt. The Egyptians. He doesn't have no history. He just what? He is a culture vulture. You understand? Read the part again. Exodus 1 verse 11. Right. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters uh -huh. to afflict them with their burden. Right. And they put for Pharaoh treasure cities. Python and Ramses. Python and Ramses. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis. Let me show you what Moses saw. Okay. Moses saw many things. He went into a dark cloud. He saw glorious things. You understand? Watch this. Give me Genesis 47 verse 7. Genesis 47. Start up verse 1 actually. Genesis 47 verse 1. Because at this point, this is what Joseph came up with a plan of how we're going to be able to what? How we're going to end up in the land of Goshen. He came up with a plan because he knew the history of the Hyksos and he knew that the Pharaohs, the Egyptians, they did not like the Hyksos. They hated them because what? They terrorized them. The Hyksos were another Canaanite nation. They were still Hamites. You understand? Because the Hyksos, they were the first to come with horses in Egypt. And the Egyptians was the first time they saw horses. If you read the history, that's what you will find. Okay? Genesis 47 verse 1, we're going to jump. The book of Genesis 47 verse 1. Come on. Then Joseph came. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren, and their flocks, and their herds, and all that they have, are come out of the land of Canaan. Really? And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. The land of Goshen. The reason why they ended up in the land of Goshen was because of Jacob's plan. Okay, jump down to verse 11. And Genesis 47 verse 11. Come on. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. You see that thing? Remember, Ramses wasn't born at this time, but Moses is mentioning Ramses, in the land of Ramses. Ramses, when, when was Ramses born? Because if you look at the dynasties, Ramses was born 400 years later. He would be born 400 years in the future. When Moses wrote this. But Moses was given history that he himself did not live in. Moses was given history that he did not live in. You understand? Read that part again, verse 11. Genesis 47, verse 11. Come on. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, 
in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses. In the land of Ramses, the land of Ramses. Ramses would be born 400 years later. Ramses was the son of Satan the first. Ramses was the son of Satan the first. Now give me that book, okay, uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu, you gotta read page 69. Okay, page 69, that, highlight, that highlighted part, where it goes into um, Ramses and say, okay? The book from Babylon to Timbuktu, come on, root of our wisdom. What page? Page 69. Uh, Ramses the second. Ramses the second. Ramses the second, come on. Ramses the second was the fourth king of the 19th dynasty. He was the what? Ramses the second was the fourth king. Of the 19th dynasty. So now look at the page, look at the look at the, the projector now, the screen. Okay, scroll up. So when you uh, scroll down a little bit, okay, you've got Ramses the first, Saint the second, Saint the first, Ramses the second. So what you see here is that Egyptian history, there's a lot of um, gray areas also. You see when he says the fourth here, they said the third. You see that? Rex is the first, saying the first, Rex is the second. He saying the fourth. Okay? Okay, read, read, keep reading. Rex is the second, was the fourth king of the 19th dynasty. From 1292 to 1225 BC. You see that thing? Look at that. He said 1292, they are saying 1279. So just focus on the dynasties. Okay? Ray. And the son of Seti the first. The what? The son of Seti the first. So Ramses the second was the son of Seti the first. Ramses the second. Okay. Um, give me second Exodus chapter fourteen verse one. Because what Moses is talking about here, he said the land of Ramses, the land of Ramses, meaning what? He's letting you know there's going to be a king called Ramses, and he's what? He's going to call the land after his own name. You understand? Second Exodus chapter one verse one. Second chapter fourteen verse one. Second Exodus chapter fourteen and verse one. Second Exodus fourteen verse one. Come on. And it came to pass upon the third day, uh -huh. I sat at an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me and Come. said, uh -huh. Esdras, Esdras. Right. And I said, Here am I, Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. So this is the Lord now. Esdras is talking about what the Lord did. So Ezra also, he saw a bush, but he doesn't say a burning bush, he doesn't say nothing about that. That's some heavy stuff. Jump down to verse, verse 4 now. Okay, read verse 4. Sikinesus 14 verse 4. Come on. And I said to him, you know what, read verse 3. Let's start verse 3. Read verse 3 down. Sikinesus 14 verse 3. Come on. Then said he unto me, in the bush, I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses. You see that thing? In the bush, I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses. Ray. And talk with him uh -huh. when my people served in Egypt. You see that thing? That's Exodus, the third chapter. Ray. And I said to him, and led my people out of the land. Come on, out of Egypt. Come on. And led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai. That's Mount Horeb, come on. Where I held him by me a long season. So the long season is what? The 40 days and 40 nights, which he did it twice because of Israel's begging. Could you imagine that? Listen, Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights. You understand? Just think about that thing. You don't eat for a couple of hours, already you feel like you want to drop dead. 40 days and 40 nights. Moses, what was he doing? Learning the scriptures. The Lord guiding him, opening him, opening his mind for the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Read. Verse 5. And told him many wondrous things. Uh -huh. And showed him the secrets of the times. You see what Moses saw? The secrets of the times. Meaning what? Moses saw Adam and Eve. He know what they look like. Moses know what Adam looks like. He knows what Eve looks like. Moses saw all of that. He saw it because the Lord showed him like he was looking at a TV. He saw all of that, Moses. He saw how the Lord said, let them be like. He saw all of that. Moses, he saw a lot. You understand? Read. And showed him the secrets of the time. Uh -huh. And the end, and commanded him, saying, These words shall thou have. 
These words shall thou declare, come on, and these words shall thou hide. You see that thing? It says, he saw the secrets of times, meaning how everything was made like King Solomon did at the end. Moses saw the last days. Moses saw what Christ looked like. Moses saw the second coming of the Messiah. He saw America. He saw America being destroyed. You understand? Moses saw all of them. Moses was going to be right there. In the midst of us. You understand? Go back. Go back to where was it? Um, give me. Give me the book of Exodus 12 and 37. Because Moses took about the land of Ramses. Because guess what? Where, 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 where we are going to dwell, as Moses explained, in the land of Goshen. And when we were in the when we would be in the land of Goshen in the last days of our captivity in Egypt, Ramses the second would be the king. You understand? Exodus 12 verse 37. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 12 verse 37. Come on. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot. They did what? The children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot. They journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot. Because when we read that book, Bible to Timber 2, he's saying it's not clear which king was ruling during the time when we left Egypt. No, no, we, we are reading it right here. Read that again. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 37. Come on. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot. Uh -huh. About 600,000 on foot that were men. You see that thing beside children. So Ramses would be the king when we left. Ramses would be the king at that point. Give me that in Numbers 33, verse 3. Okay? Numbers chapter 33 and verse 3. Because you really need to think about it. We left Egypt at midnight, right? Right now, when we left, when we, we, we was running at this point. Right now, we was running. Men, women, and children, and the gold and the silver that we took from the Egyptians. We was running. Really, just think about this thing is all spiritual, brothers and sisters. Just think about this thing. Okay? Numbers 33, verse 3. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 33, verse 3. Come on. And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month. You see that thing? On the Passover. Because guess what today is? The 15th day. Today is the 15th day. You understand? Today is the 15th day. We did what? Read that again, verse 3. The book of Numbers 33, verse 3. Come on. And they departed from Ramses in uh -huh. the first month, right. on the 15th day uh -huh. of the first month. Right. On the morrow after the Passover. On the morrow after the Passover. You understand? Right. The children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. Because they all saw us when we left. That's why they were chasing us. And the Lord, guess what he did? He drowned the Egyptians for our sins. You understand? And our forefathers and foremothers and the children, they saw all of them. They saw all of them. They saw the glory of the Most High God, what the Lord did for our sins. Okay? Now, go back to Exodus now. Exodus, no, jump down to verse 5. Read verse 5. Numbers 33, verse 5. Come on. And the children of Israel removed from Ramses and pitched in Sukkot. He is repeating it again. We removed from Ramses. Because Ramses was the king when we left. What dynasty was this? The 19th dynasty. Okay? Go back to Exodus now. Exodus 1 verse 12. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 12. The book of Exodus is the one we saw. Come on. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Mm -hmm. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. That's the same thing we want today. Read. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Meaning what? Much wicked oppression they put us in. Come on. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in water and in brick. And in all manner of service in the field, all their service, wherein they, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. Come on. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other, Pur. So now you have these two sisters, Shifra and Pur. These were righteous sisters right here. These are righteous foremothers. You understand? Read on. Watch what happens. Come on. 
And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew woman. Now this is Pharaoh, uh, uh, this is Pharaoh instructing our foremothers, Shifra and Pua. When you perform the office of the midwife, you understand because they were responsible for making sure that the, 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 the Hebrew women give birth the right way because back then, the children, there was no such thing as, um, you know, the C-sections and all that. You understand? There was nothing like that. The children will pop out. Gravity will pull them out. That's what happened. You understand? They would sit upon stools, gravity will pull the baby out. Right. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew woman and see them upon the stools, Ray. if it be a son, if it be a son, come on, then you shall kill him. If it's a son, put the child to death. That is the same thing today. Killing the black man and exalting the black woman above the black man. That's what's going on this day. You understand? Right. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. You see that thing? If it be a daughter, she shall live. Because what was they doing? They understood that the men, they are the ones that are responsible for doing what? For continuing the multiplication of the nation. They were the, they're also the leaders of the nation. So it says, kill the men. You understand? To, this is where the abortions to this is where the abortions started to happen. The abortions they started in Egypt. Today we are under new Egypt now. Guess what? They are on an all-time high. Okay, come on. But the midwives feared God. The midwives feared God. These were righteous sisters right here. You understand? Give me that this uh, chapter two real quick. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter two. But the midwives, our foremothers. They feared God. Sirach 2 verse 15. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2 verse 15. Come on. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. So the word that Shifra and Pua, our foremother, did not, dis or did not uh, disobey was what? Killing. Because they understood, thou shalt not kill. They understood that law. You understand? That's why they said, no, we don't want to do that. Right. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Come on. And they that love him will keep his ways. They will keep, they will apply the commandments. Okay, come on, go back to where was that? Exodus 1. Exodus 1 verse 17. The book of Exodus 1 verse 17. Read. But the midwives feared God uh -huh. and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, Read. but saved the men children alive. Come on. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing? and have saved the men children alive. He says, why are you keeping the men children alive? Why are you doing that? He's asking. Because he's realizing, listen, I gave you an instruction to make sure if it's a boy, put them to death. If it's a girl, keep them alive. Read. And the midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. The Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. Come on. For they are alive. They are what? They are lively. They are lively because the lively oracles was committed unto us. We was given the commandments. Right. And are delivered here the midwives come in unto them. He says, the children are delivered before the midwives come in. Before the women, the midwives come and deal with the Hebrew women, the children are already out of the mother's way. Right. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives uh -huh. and the people multiply and wax very mighty. Right. And the king oh, wait, 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 wait. Read the twenty again. Exodus one verse three. Come on. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. The most said God, He dealt well with the midwives. Meaning what? Because what? They observe His laws. We keep the laws of the land. The laws of the land. If you read Romans chapter eighteen, we are commanded to observe the laws of the land. We only observe the laws of the land if they don't go against the laws of God. If the laws of the land said men and men can get married, no, we don't follow that because it's against the Bible. We only follow the law of the land if it, may, it mirrors with what is written in this book. You understand? Come on. Therefore, the, therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied uh -huh. and waxed very mighty. Rain. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God. The midwives feared God. They kept the commandments. Come on. That he made them houses. He made them houses, meaning what? The children of Israel, they took care of Shifra and Pua. Right. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, 
Every son that is born, you shall cast into the river, uh -huh. and every daughter you shall save alive. You see that thing? That was the command. That was the command. That's the same thing going on today. That's why they effeminated the black man. Okay? Black man wearing tight pants. We were dealing with it when we were at camp. Black men wearing tight pants and pink shoes taking their pants. That's what's going on. That's how they effeminate the black man. You understand? Now give me Exodus 2 verse 23. The Exodus 2 verse 23. Read that. Exodus 2 verse 23. Come on. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. The king of Egypt died. Hold it. Go, go to the book now again on page 69 from Babylon to Timbuktu. Let's see who this king that died. Okay. Page 69 of From Babylon to Simba 2, Rain. the group of uh -huh. Ramses the II was the fourth king of the 19th dynasty. Come on. From 1292 to 1225 BC, and the son of Seti the I. The son of Seti the I. So the king of Egypt that died was Seti the I. Seti the I is the king of Egypt that died. Go ahead. He was pure black. He was what? He was pure black. You see that thing? The Egyptians were black people. But when you look at these movies that they portray, you only see white people walking out as part of the Exodus. No. This legend you write there, he said that he was what? He was pure black. Meaning he was blue black. Okay? He was dark as night, like a tarot. You understand? That's how the Egyptians are, actually, the Hamites. If you go to West, West Sudan, West Sudan, yeah, they are full black, like this. Okay, go back to Exodus 2, verse 23 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 23. Rain. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. The king of Egypt died, saving the first. Rain. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. They sighed by the reason of the bondage. We was complaining because of what hard bondage. Come on. And they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Come on. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So the Lord remembered the covenant that he made with our forefathers. Give me 2nd Ezra 3 verse 13. One more again. 2nd Ezra chapter 3 verse 13. So we don't lose the thought. 2nd Ezra 3 verse 13. Read that again. 2nd Ezra chapter 3 verse 13. Come on. Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, Thou didst choose a man from among them whose name was Abraham. Uh -huh. Come on. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will. Okay, read on. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, uh -huh. promising him. What did he do? And madest an everlasting covenant with him, uh -huh. promising him. Promising him. Promising him. Come on. That thou wouldst never forsake his seed. Go back to Exodus 2, verse 24 again. The book of Exodus chapter 2, verse 4. Come on. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. That's what we just read right there. Come on. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. So God looked upon the children of Israel, and the Lord had respect unto them. The Lord only has respect unto those that keep his commandments. God has respect unto those that keep his commandments. Okay, watch this. Give me Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26 and verse. Let me see where I want to go. Leviticus 26 and verse 9. Read that. Leviticus 26, verse 9. Uh -huh. For I will have respect unto you, and will make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. You see that thing? He says, He will have respect unto us. He only has respect unto those children of Israel that keep his commandments. If you don't keep God's commandments, the Lord has no respect for you. It's that simple. Okay, watch this. Give me Exodus 3 verse 1. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Now this is when the Lord um, appeared unto Moses. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole chapter. Okay, because I want to go through the plagues. Alright? Exodus 3 verse 1, read that. Exodus 3 verse 1. Read. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father, in law, uh -huh. the priest of Midian. Come on. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Right. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him 
in a flame of fire. That was Christ. The angel, that angel of the Lord that stood about Christ. Come on. In a flame of fire uh -huh. out of the midst of a bush. Really? And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. That's the main stuff, right? You see verse 2? Hmm. This is like a lurid missile. Go ahead. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why this bush is not burnt. Why the bush is not burnt. Come on, this is Moses and the burning bush now. Pay attention. Come on. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, Ray. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. So what did Moses do? And when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, you see that he opened his spiritual ears, he turned aside to see. Ray. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Come on. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Come on. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Ray. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. He says, For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. That's where we at. The place that each and every one of us is standing is holy ground. Because the Spirit of the Lord is in here. The Spirit of the Lord is here with us. So the place that you're standing on is holy ground. Ray. The six, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Come on. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Come on. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, mm -hmm. and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Come on. For I know their sorrow. So the Lord knows our sorrow. So when you look at back then, during the time of the Egyptian captivity, the Lord saw how the Egyptians was oppressing us. Okay, come on. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Pray. To bring them up out of the land, unto a good land and a lodge, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Ray. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression of the wind. The Egyptians oppressed them. What did he say? Is that one? I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. He says, he says, I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Guess what? The same thing that happened back then, the Lord is seeing the same thing today, where the white man is oppressing us, where the Chinese man is oppressing us, where the Arab man is oppressing us. The Lord is not oblivious to none of them. The Lord sees everything that's going on. That's why he's waking us up this day. To get us ready to go on to the wilderness. To deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. You understand? Ray. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Uh -huh. That thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You see what the Lord is saying? Guess what? The Lord is doing the same thing with us. When we go to camp to teach our people, guess what? The Lord is sending us to Pharaoh, the new Pharaoh. Because guess where we go? We go to the street corners in the lands of our enemies, behind enemy lines. What are we doing? We teach the Bible against the great kingdoms that are over us. Give me that in uh, Jeremiah. Okay, give me Jeremiah 28. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The book of Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. Come on. The prophets that have seen before me, the prophets that have been before me, read that right. The book of Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. Come on. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. The prophets are born against many countries. Against, against, right. And against great kingdoms. Against great kingdoms. America is a great kingdom. Europe is a great kingdom. China is a great kingdom, right. Of war, of what? Of war, World War Three. That's what we teach about, Ray. Of war and of evil, and of evil, the evil that the Lord is, the evil day of the Lord, Ray. And of pestilence. Pestilence. Guess what's going on right now? Coronavirus is a pestilence. The COVID nineteen is a pestilence. What are we teaching? We teach about it on the streets. You understand, Ray? This nine, the prophet which the 
The prophet which prophesied of peace. The prophet which prophesied of peace. Because these four prophets, the pastors, they prophesied of peace. That there's going to be peace. No, there's going to be war on this earth before there will be peace. Come on. The prophet which prophesied of peace. When the word of the prophet shall come to pass, come on. Then shall the prophet be known that the Lord had truly sent him. Because what was happening was that Hananiah was the prophet that was prophesying of peace. And the Lord was like, listen, Jeremiah, go and speak to this uh, to this uh, false prophet right here. That is, he should not be prophesying about peace. You understand? And guess what? The Lord put that prophet to death. That's what he did. And then I was put to death. Just read on, just read on in the chapter and you find that out. Okay? Give me Exodus 6 and 1. Exodus chapter 6 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 6 verse 1. Come on. Then the Lord said to Moses, uh -huh. Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. You see what he's saying? He says, Now shalt thou see what I'm going to do to Pharaoh. Now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to this man. Watch this. Come on. For with a strong hand uh -huh. shall he let them go. Come on. And with a strong hand shall he drive them up. Shall he drive them out of this land. You see what the Lord is telling Moses? He says, This is what I'm going to do for him. This is what I'm going to do to Pharaoh. You understand? And the Lord did that thing. Because he did it because of what? Because of the promise he made to our forefather Abraham. That's what we're reading here. Because I know some of you forgotten already. Exodus 2 verse 24. Write it down because I know some of you forgot. Okay, watch this. Give me Exodus 7 verse 15. Let's deal with the plagues. I need you brothers to be ready. Okay, on the screen. I want the children to see the plagues. I want you sisters to see this thing. Okay, watch this. Um, Exodus chapter 7 verse 15. Exodus 7 verse 15. The book okay. of Exodus. Wait. Chapter 7 verse 15. Come on. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water. Uh -huh. And thou shalt stand by the rivers out unto the water. By the rivers break. Which verse you have? Read verse, read verse 15 again. The book of Exodus chapter 7 verse 15. Come on. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Uh -huh. Lo, he goeth out unto the water. Come on. And thou shalt stand by the river's brinks against the cup. Uh -huh. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand. Come on. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord, the Lord God of the Hebrews, hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. Uh -huh. And behold, here the two. Thou wouldest not hear. Read. Thus saith the Lord. This in this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. So now this is the first plague. You understand? The first plague is that the waters will turn to blood. You understand? Because what was in the waters? What was in the waters was the fish. The crocodiles that our the Egyptians was worshiping, and guess what we was doing? We were doing the same thing, bowing down to an Egyptian god called Sobek. You understand, Sobek? You see that? That's the crocodile god right there. You understand? That is what the Egyptians was worshiping. Guess what we were doing? We were worshiping the same thing. You ever seen when you go to like your Limpopo, wherever, you see Bakwena, the toll gates? Uh -huh. Those are Amites. Okay? Those are former slave masters, by the way. You understand? They have that thing right there. It comes from all the way back to Egypt. You understand? It comes from there. Watch this. Uh, read on. Exodus to the same verse 19. Come on. And the Lord speak unto Moses. No, no, read verse 18. Exodus chapter 7, verse 18. Come on. And the fish that is in the river shall die. And the river shall stink. And the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. So now, because remember, they were worshipping these things. Watch this. Give me that, give me that one. Just type up um, the, the fish head. The fish head. The, the Pope. The Pope, they wear that. Okay. And guess what? Guess what the 
the Pope gets it from. The Pope gets the stuff from the Assyrian Empire, but the Assyrian Empire gets it from Egypt. You understand? Yeah, you see that? Click that. They are seen because the Assyrians had that. Mm, nice, it's not visible. Could you go back? Yeah, that. You see that? You see that head that, that, uh, that the Pope is wearing? It looks like the, what? The head of a fish. You understand? That's why he says, and the fish that was in the river, they died. Because they worship them. They believe that the crocodile and the fish, they are the ones that are responsible for making sure that their water in Egypt is okay. You worship that? I'm gonna make sure that the water turns to blood so you don't drink no water. Let's see if your God, the fish and the crocodile that you worship, is gonna what? Is gonna clean the waters. We was worshiping that in Egypt. You understand? That's how low we fell. Guess what? Today we have fallen so low while worshiping the white man as Jesus, as God, while worshiping, while bound down to rocks in Mecca under Islam. Same thing today. Same thing going on. People be wearing crosses on their necks, the same thing. Believing that a cross is going to deliver them. No, a cross is not going to deliver you. A cross is a symbol of oppression. Okay? Um, go back to Exodus 7, read verse 19. Exodus 7, verse 19. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt. Come on. Upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, right. and upon all the pools of water. That they may become blood, mm -hmm. and that there, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. There was blood everywhere. So could you imagine you are thirsty, you want to drink, but there's blood everywhere? That's what the Lord did in Egypt. You understand? And the most that God in the scriptures, you don't read about where He doesn't give you the, the time difference. Okay? This one happened, and it was a couple of days, or it was immediately after. No. Just look at today what's going on today. It's like a woman in travail. The first wave of the corona hit, it terrorized the people. You understand? Now, guess what? We entered into the second wave. Now they said the third wave is coming. Right now, it's come. Because when a woman is going through um, uh, child labor pains, the cramps, they go high, they go down. They go high, they go down. So those that have children, you know about that, right? That's exactly what we're, that's exactly what, when you read the scriptures, that's what's going on now. So when people are relaxed, they think, no, everything is good, no, everything is not good. Much evil is coming, okay? Now, let's go to the next one. Give me that in Exodus 8 verse 1. Exodus chapter 8 verse 1. Let's deal with the second play, okay? I need you to be ready. Um, I'll let you know when we're supposed to type that. Exodus 8 verse 1, read that. The book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 1, come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Right. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all the borders with frogs. With the what? I will smite all thy borders with frogs. He says he's going to smite Egypt with frogs. Come on. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, uh -huh. which shall go up and come into thine house, into thy bedchamber, mm. and upon thy bed. Come on. And into the house of thy servants, and upon the people, and upon thy people, and into thy ovens, and into thy needy throne. So you really have to imagine this thing. Imagine what's sitting right here. All of a sudden, there's just a multitude of frogs in this room. Everywhere. Heaps upon heaps of frogs. You really need to imagine. This is the most I is a genius when it comes to terror. You don't play games. Frogs. He didn't say snakes. No, no. Frogs. And the type of frogs that the Lord made back then is not the type of frogs that you read about today that you see about. No, he made special frogs for that occasion. The ones that you've never seen before. You understand? Come on. Verse 3. And the river verse shall verse 4. Verse 4. Verse 4. And the frogs shall come both shall come up both upon thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers. 
and over the ponds and cause frogs to come up upon land of Egypt. Read on verse 6. Watch this. Verse 6. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the magicians did so with their enchantments. So the magicians is talking about the Sangomas, that's what they call them today. The magicians is the Sangomas that was in Egypt, that they had power also to do the same thing. Go ahead. And brought up the frogs upon the land of Egypt. Right. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go. Now watch this. He can't. He can't. Type that so we can see it. That's the frog god. Okay? You see that? That's he can't. Okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine like that. That's the frog god. You see, they've got even stone leaf. Okay? Items. Or they cut them in stone. That is what we was worshipping in Egypt. You see, even the frog has got the ankh in the head. You understand? That is what we was worshipping in Egypt. We felt so low that we was bound down to frogs. Okay? So you really have to imagine the level of misery and bitterness that we had when we was in Egypt. It was bad. If you think it was bad, listen, you have no idea. Today, it's worse than you can possibly imagine. You understand? Okay, watch this. Give me, um, give me Exodus chapter 8, verse 16 now. Exodus 8, verse 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 8, verse 16. Come on. And the Lord said to Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, uh -huh. that it may become lice, Throughout all the land of Egypt. That he may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. Come on. This lies, this is responsible for what? Uncleanness. You understand? Uncleanness. Because they believed that there was a God that was responsible for what? Health and all of that stuff. Hygiene and all of that stuff. The Lord said, okay, let's see if your God, your God is going to protect you now that you worship. Read. Verse 17. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod. And smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man. Come on. And in peace, all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Right. And the magicians did so with their enchantments Come on. to bring forth lice. Uh, but they could not. They could not. They couldn't replicate the lice. You understand? Read on. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Come on. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the figure of God. Now they are acknowledging that the most high God is the only power on this earth. Now they are humbling down, but this whole time they thought they could replicate everything that Moses and Aaron was doing. Right. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. So now, because I see we've got the graveyard shaped. Okay? It is the graveyard shaped. You understand? Brothers, we was in Egypt. Just think about it. Just think about it. When we was in the world doing some evil stuff, guess what we'll be saying right now? Their roof, their roof is on fire. Now everybody's just slumbering, wants to sleep. Listen, you better be awake for this thing. Okay, come on. Verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water uh -huh. and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go. That they may serve me. So now watch this. Now give me lice. Be Beelzebub. Okay? Beelzebub. Lice. No, Beal, meaning B A A L. Beelzebub. Uh huh. Lice. Just say L I C E. Let me see what comes up. That's it right there. That right there. That is what came up upon all the land of Egypt. And we was one. Um, this is responsible for uncleanness. It's part of the flies, family. You understand? That's why you see people have lice in their hair. You understand that? Yeah. That is what was going on in Egypt. Lice was coming up upon the animals, upon the people, upon anything that moved. There was lice upon it. Uncleanness. You understand? And guess what? They believed that there was a God that was responsible to do what? To make sure that they are clean and hygiene. 
and hygienic. You understand? So the Lord said, okay, let's see if Beelzebub, Lord of the li uh, lies, is going to protect you this day. Okay, watch this. Read verse 21. Okay, here's another one. Exodus 8 verse 21. Come on. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and, 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 and into thy houses, and the house of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, mm -hmm. and also the ground whereon they are. Come and, on. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell. Come on. That no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. You see that right there? We have, the, we have a God. There's a God we said there is a God. Understand that? In the land of Goshen, none of this was going on. Guess what's going on today? All of these, these the, the virus that is killing our people and all that, you keep the commandments, you're going to be fine. You don't keep the commandments, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be affected by this stuff. You understand? Watch this. Uh, Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies, because that's what they were calling Christ. They were saying Christ was Lord of the Flies. Okay? Yes, because the flies, because when there's flies, what generally happens? Maggots happen. Okay? Maggots. When, it, when they, you see flies, there's stink going on. You understand? So guess what? The, 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 the God that they was worshipping, they believed that um, was responsible for preventing all manner of uncleanness to happen upon Egypt. It did not on this day. Because we were worshipping this. And the reason why we worship this nonsense is because of what? We believe that the reason why they are powerful is because they worship this stuff. No. They did this, they, they were powerful because the Lord made them so. That's why they were powerful, not because they were worshipping these things. But that's what they believe. That's the same thing going on today. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 verse 8. Because I want to show you the type of the, the type of flies. We see like uh, the flies that the Lord sent to Egypt. No, it wasn't the type of flies that you see today. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 8. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 8. Come on. And in this thou madest thy enemies confess that it is thou who delivers all who delivers from all evil. He says, it is you who deliver us from all evil because we are under our enemies, the Egyptians. Next verse. For them, the bitings of grasshoppers. The bitings of grasshoppers. The Lord said the type of grasshoppers that was biting the people in Egypt. You understand? Come on. For them, the bitings of grasshoppers uh, and flies killed. So you really need to imagine what type of fly that will bite you and you drop dead. What type of fly is that? I've never seen that. It's not a, this is not a regular house fly. You understand? It's the type of fly that when it lands on a car, the car will collapse. That's the type of fly we're talking about. You understand? Read the part again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 9. Come on. For them, the bitings of grasshoppers and flies killed. Uh -huh. Neither was there found any reason remedy for their life. Come on. For they were worthy to be punished by such. He says they were worthy to be punished by such because they were worshipping them things. They were worshipping these things. Okay? Give me that in Exodus chapter 9 verse 1. Exodus chapter 9 verse 1. Let's deal with the next plague. Okay? We dealt with the lies, with the flies. Now we're going to deal with the next plague. Exodus 9 verse 1. The book of Exodus chapter 9 verse 1. Come on. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, and tell him, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, uh -huh. Let my people go, that they may serve me. Rain. For if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt hold them still, Come on. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, uh -huh. upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous murrain. There shall be a very grievous murrain. Would you, would, would you define the word murrain? Okay. 
let's say the definition of the word urea. That's not a regular Hebrew word. Okay, it's double R. Okay, what is what is it saying? Read that. It says red water fever or similar infectious disease affecting cattle or other animals. Because guess what? It's a plague, an epidemic. Hmm. You see that thing? Read the part again. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. No, chapter 9, verse 3. Come on. Exodus 9, verse 3. Read. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine. So now the Lord was going to affect the cattle in Egypt. Watch this. Would you Google uh, type Hathor? Hathor. Uh, God of Egypt. You can even just leave that. Yes. You see, it's got like the the the, the, the horns of a cow, and there's got a sun disc in the middle. You see that? Uh, it's got the sun disc in the middle. Um, so they worship that. They worship. You know what? Google, Google the, Google the, um, the cows of, of Rwanda. Okay, cows of Rwanda. Yes, these ones. That's what. That's the cows they had. These ones right here. Okay. These are the cows. They was worshiping this stuff. You understand? They worship this stuff right here. Because they also believe that, um, you remember the Lord says he's going to give what? He's going to give murrain. An infectious disease, a plague that is going to affect the cattle because they worship this stuff. You understand? So the Lord said, okay, you worship this cow, here's, what's gonna, here's, here's what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to give it diseases and plagues. Let's see if it's going to deliver itself and deliver you out of this thing. It did not. You understand? It did not do that thing. Okay, come on, Exodus 9. Exodus chapter 9 and verse, read verse 5. Exodus 9 verse 5. Read that. The book of Exodus 9 verse 5. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. Uh -huh. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. Come on. And all the cattle of Egypt died. Ray. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Because our cattle don't look like this. You understand? I used to look after cattle, sheep, and goat. I've never looked after cattle like this ones. The ones that we look after is the ones with small, small horns. Okay? These ones. These are normal cows. <coughs> Those are not normal cows. You understand? Those are the cows that the Egyptians was worshipping. Not this one, but the other ones. Okay? Read on verse 6. Verse 6. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Okay, give me Exodus chapter 9, verse 8 now. Exodus chapter 9, verse 8. Read that. Exodus chapter 9, verse 8. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses uh -huh. and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, uh -huh. and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Aaron. Come on. And it shall become small dust in the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth. Upon plains, upon men, with plains upon men, and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. Because they remember the Egyptians, they had a God, where God is responsible for beauty. The Lord said, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jack your faces up. I'm gonna mess your skin up, I'm gonna give you boils. Let's see the God that you call Kitesh. Type that now. Kitesh. That's Kitesh right there, the goddess of beauty. So the, what the Lord did, he brought boils upon them because they believed that there was a God responsible for beauty. But we know according to the scriptures, who's responsible for beauty? The Most High God. He's the one that's responsible for that. So we worship this thing. You understand? We worship this thing right here. Watch this. Give me... Now keep reading, read verse 11. 
Exodus chapter 9 verse 11. You know what? Read verse 10. Read verse 10. Exodus 9 verse 10. Exodus 9 verse 10. Uh, and they took ashes of the furnace come on. and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven and it became a bull breaking forth with blades upon man and upon beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. Right? And the Lord hardened the heart of, of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, Come on. as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. Come on. Verse 13. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning. You know what? That's it. That's it on there. Give me Exodus 9 16 now. River 16. Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And in very deed, for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show thee, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. That's why the Lord is doing this. That his name may be declared among all the earth. His name. Not Pharaoh's name, not their gods, none of them. Great. And yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. Come on. Behold. Tomorrow is the time about I will this time. Tomorrow about this time, come on. Behold, tomorrow about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, mm -hmm. such as such as have not been in the Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. So the Lord is saying, Listen, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring some grievous hail upon Egypt. Because they believed there was a sky god that was responsible for looking after the what? The crops and all of that, no, no, the earth god. Because the hail will come down, will destroy the crops. They believe there was a God responsible for that thing. Read. Exodus chapter 9, verse 17. As thou exalted thyself against my people. No, verse 19. Verse 19. Come on. Exodus chapter 9, verse 19. Uh -huh. Send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field. Come on. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field. And shall not be brought home, the hail shall come upon, shall come down upon them, come on, and they shall die. The hail shall come down upon them, every beast, every man, you understand that is found in the field, they are going to be put to death because of this hail. Rain. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. Rain. And he that regardeth not the word of the word of the Lord. Left his servants and his cattle in the field. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand, stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hail upon all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. So now this hail is going to destroy what? He says it's going to destroy the man, the beast, and the herbs, meaning their crops. Come on. So there was hail. And fire mingled with the hail. And what? And fire mingled with the hail. So the hail was mingled with fire. Water mingled with fire. Water is supposed to what? To put fire out. It didn't happen on this day. Two opposite elements were, were operating together as one. You understand? One did not put the other one out as it's supposed to according to nature. You understand? Read. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Come on. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and all, and the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. You see that thing right there? So what we are reading here is the most said God, because remember, Egypt was a powerhouse. And we made Egypt the powerful kingdom on earth through slavery. So because of that, everything was prosperous, was prospering in Egypt. Their crops, their livestock, you understand? Even the megalithic structures that they made us to build for them, they were prospering. So when the Lord was bringing death and destruction upon them, nobody believed it. That's why the magicians were trying to replicate, to undo, to, to repeat what the Lord is doing, to prove also that they can do it as well. So what is this teaching us? This is teaching us that back then, there was spiritual powers back then. Yeah. There were spiritual powers back then. You understand? People flying on, um, on broomsticks and all that. Yeah. They get it from Egypt. 
There were spiritual powers back then, not today. Them things are gone. Now it's just effects now, like you read, in, like you read about in 2 Ezra chapter 9. Give me the book of Exodus 10 verse 12. The book of Exodus chapter 10 verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail has left. Whatever the, lake, the, the, the hail was left, the locusts came and destroyed everything. Come on. And Moses stretched forth his rod over them, over the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. Wait. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in the coast of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Very previous were they. Before them, there were no such locusts as they. Neither after them shall be such. Come on. For they covered the face of the whole earth. They did what? For they covered the face of the whole earth. What type of locusts are these? Read on, watch this. So that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. Come on. And there remained not any green thing in, in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through all the land of Egypt. So now, because you need to remember, you need to think about it. Because the Egyptians, they believed that, listen, there was a goddess, there was a sky goddess, you understand, who was responsible for what? All the things that will come out of space that will protect them. If there's a comet, you understand? If there's a, um, uh, you know, that cover stone that we see in Mecca, what is that called? No, 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 no. They, we know it's the, they call it the cover stone, but the stone that falls from heaven, that falls from, from the sky, what is that called? The what? A comet, right? Okay. So they had a sky god protecting the sky. You understand? Nut. Nut. Nut is the sky god. Okay? Responsible for what? Everything that will come from the sky that will destroy them. The Lord sent hail, he sent fire from heaven. And Nut could not protect them. Would you scroll down? Let me see that. Okay, let's just stop there. Okay, you see that? You see the stars up there? You see the sky? So that's what they worship. They worship the sky. You understand? They, that's why you see the white man is obsessed with going to the heavens. Because they believe there's some power in that thing. Okay? Not the sky goddess. Now you don't have to tell them. You can, you can just go back to it. Yes, sir. Right there. So they worship the sky. They worship the ordinances in the sky, the sun, the moon, and the stars, you understand, and the sky itself. You understand? So that's why the Lord brought hail and fire from heaven. So that to see if not is going to protect them. Not did not. You see that? That's why I'm saying the graveyard shift. Okay? The reason why I'm saying this is because in the world, what was our people doing just be grooving here? Okay. Okay, come on. Give me um give me Exodus 10, verse 20. Exodus 10 verse 20. Come on. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children the children of Israel go. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. Even darkness which may be felt. Even darkness which may be felt. Come on, meaning there was three days of darkness in Egypt. Come on. And Moses stretched forth his hand to heaven. Uh -huh. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another. Neither rose any from his place for three days. Uh -huh. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Would you Google um, Egypt, um, the sun god Ra? The sun god Ra. R A. Ra, the sun god. Okay, that's it right there. Just click the first one. The first one is fine. You see that? Ra, the sun god. 
Okay, they believed that there was a there was the, the the sun was a god which they worshipped and we worshipped it too. That's why today our people are still doing what they are still going to church on Sunday to worship the sun god Ra, which is who they are, Nimrod. Okay, so that's why the Lord decided to bring darkness in Egypt to see if the sun god was going to what bring forth light. And guess what? She failed. Okay. She failed. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 1. Exodus 11, verse 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh Come on. and upon Egypt. Uh -huh. Afterwards, he will let thee go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence all together. Watch this, come on. The Lord now is giving, an, is giving us an instruction of what we must do before we leave. Read. Speak now in the ears of the, of the people. Uh -huh. And let every man borrow of his neighbor. Borrow of his neighbor. And every woman of her neighbor. Uh -huh. Jewels of silver and jewels of gold. We had real jewels and real gold in Egypt. Come on. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Uh -huh. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt. Come on. In the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Right. And Moses said, Thus said the Lord, About midnight. About what? About midnight. Midnight, come on. Will I go out into the midst of Egypt. Right. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. Shall what? Shall die. All the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall be put to death. Come on. From the firstborn of Pharaoh. That sit upon his throne, uh -huh. even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the mill, right. and all the firstborn of beasts. You see that thing? So now, what we are reading here, the Lord is giving the Moses the instruction of listen, this is what's going to go down. Okay, come on. The six, right. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, uh -huh. such as there was none like it, nor shall nor shall be like it anymore. So now, you see what he's saying? It says, there shall be what? It says, there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. Like I always tell you, brothers and sisters, just imagine the whole of Jobek just crying. Screaming. And when I say the whole of Jobek, I'm not excluding Pretoria. No, no. He's included. Everybody just crying because their firstborn is dead. That's what we're reading here. This is, yes, not my Jesus, yes, my Jesus, yes. Okay? That's what we're reading here. This is the, let's team Jesus. Thank you, team Jesus. Today, by the way, we saw, you know these um, hypocritic Christians, they, they, they have a car, BMW, there is written team Jesus. But in there, the people, they are driving drunk. The car is just dancing on the road. Team Jesus. Team Jesus. Okay, Team White Jesus. That's what they were saying. Okay, watch this. Um, give me, keep reading, read verse 7. Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. Uh -huh. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Against man of beast, that he may know that the Lord hath thought to put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So now watch this. Now, before midnight happens, this is what the Lord is commanding us to do now. Exodus 12 verse 1. The book Exodus, of Exodus 12 verse 1. Come on. The book of Exodus 12 verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, mm. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Right. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take, they shall take the, to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, Ray. a lamb for a house. Come on. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Ray. Every man according to his eating shall make shall make your count for the lamb. Ray. Your lamb shall be without blemish. It shall be without blemish like Christ was, right? A male of the first year, uh -huh. ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. So now he's telling us that the meat of the Passover, it must be sheep or goat, not chicken. Come on. 
And ye shall keep it up until the forty day of the first of the same month. The same month, the first month of the year, come on. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the <coughs> That's why we must name. Read on. And they shall take it, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts uh -huh. and the upper door posts of the houses of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Read. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. They shall what? And they shall eat the flesh in that night. So, I, hold on. You know, I want you brothers and sisters to really pay attention to this thing. You know, when you think about it, right? Our Lord and Savior was crucified, was, uh, was crucified on the Passover. Day hours. Okay. Do you want to deal with the child? Okay, so our Lord and Savior was crucified on the Passover, right? So really just think about it. We went over the gospel of Christ, right? Yes, when we're going over how the process, what happened before Christ was crucified at 9 a.m. Yes, <laughs> Guess what? Christ called, give me that in Matthew 26. Let me show you something. Matthew 26. Okay. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26 and verse 17. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 17. Uh -huh. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, uh -huh. Where wilt thou? You know what? Wait, wait, wait. Read verse 2. Matthew 26, verse 2. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 2. Uh -huh. Ye know that of the two days is the feast of the Passover. Brilliant. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Read verse 16 now. Matthew 26, verse 16. Uh -huh. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray. The he is Judas Iscariot. Come on. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Uh -huh. And he said, Go into the city to such a to such a man and say unto him, The master said, My time is at hand. Right. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Read on. And the disciples did as Jesus had pointed them, uh -huh. and they made ready the Passover. They made ready the Passover. Watch this, come on. Now when the evening was come, when the what? When the even was come, when the even was come, because that's when the Passover begins according to Genesis 1 verse 5. The day begins at sundown. Go ahead. He sat down with his, with the twelve. He sat down with the twelve with the twelve, twelve disciples. Come on. And they and as they did eat, uh -huh. he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Now I want you to really think now. You see, the Passover, that's when we left Egypt. We celebrate the Passover, midnight we left, because at midnight there was a great cry in Egypt. Guess what? The same thing that happened in Egypt, guess what happened? Christ was crucified, was betrayed on this day. So when we are going over the Gospels, from the time when they prepared the Passover, guess what? We are, we, when you read the Gospels, it's going, it's time, the whole night. What was they doing? Plotting and scheming on how to betray the Son of Man. So, two different timelines in history. You understand? Christ delivering us out of the hand of the Egyptians. And guess what? Christ being crucified and betrayed by the same people that he delivered them out of Egypt. Could you imagine that? And guess what? Judas was in Egypt. Yeah. Judas was in Egypt. He got delivered. The black ashy demon was back through regeneration in Rome. You see that thing? So today, yes, we was delivered out of Egypt. But today is the day when our Lord and Savior was betrayed. To be crucified. So when we sit down here and actually, you see brothers are, you know, slumbering and all that. Today is the day when our Lord and Savior was betrayed to be crucified. Just think about that thing. Okay? I understand the children, you know, they will fall asleep and all that. Listen. Our Lord and Savior was betrayed on this day. You understand? You really need to let this thing just marinate in your spirit. 
Mm. On this day. Because some of you think in your year we were delivered out of Egypt. Yes, we were delivered. But guess what? The same day that we were delivered out of Egypt, in the, in the future, Christ was betrayed and was crucified. You really need to look at the, the contrast between the two events and the parallels thereof. Okay? Watch this. Go back. I don't want to get into that topic. Okay? Exodus 12. Um, Exodus chapter 12. Remember when Christ was coming back? He was, he was, he said, he went to pray because he said the hour was coming. Guess what? When he came back, what happened? What was the disciples doing? They were sleeping. He was mad as hell. You understand? It says, you couldn't sit with me for a couple of somethings when I go and pray. Are you kidding? You understand? Hmm. Exodus 12. Okay. <laughs> Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12 and verse, verse 9. Read that again. No, read verse 8. Verse 8. The book of Exodus chapter 12 is 8. Come on. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. Uh -huh. Rose with fire uh -huh. and unleavened bread. And unleavened bread, come on. And with bitter herbs. With bitter they, herbs. And with bitter herbs they shall eat. That's the menu for the Passover. Unleavened bread, bitter herbs, lamb or goat. Come on. Eat not of it raw. Rain. Nor sword it at all with water. Don't boil it, come on. But roast with fire. Meaning what? You must bry it. Come on. His head and his head with his legs. And with the presence thereof. That's the insides, come on. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Stop right there. Read that part again. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. The meat must not remain in the morning. Because if it remains in the morning, guess where it goes? The garbage. Mm. Mm. Sisters, you've been nursing that figure, you better eat the parcel. <laughs> the hell is this? Read that part again, verse 10. Exodus chapter 12 verse 10. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. You see what that thing read? He says, You shall burn with fire. You better burn that thing. We're not burning nothing with fire. We're gonna eat the meat. Okay? Yes, sir. Christ, our Passover was Christ, was, was sacrificed for us. So therefore, let us do what? Let us keep the feast. Okay, go ahead. Verse 11. Verse 11. Come on. And thus shall you eat it. Ray. With your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, uh -huh. and your staff in your hand. Come on. And you shall eat it in haste. Uh -huh. It is the Lord's pastor. Because we are getting ready to leave captivity. Ray. Verse, verse 12. Uh -huh. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. This night, meaning midnight. Come on. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. When it says the firstborn, because some of you might think, no, it's just the people. No, 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 no. Livestock too. Cat, dog, puppy, everything was put to death. Ray. Both man and beast. Uh -huh. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I will execute judgment. Come on. And the law. Ray. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses. We are. This is the part I actually want to pause on. Read verse 13 again. Exodus 12 verse 13. Come on. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Uh -huh. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Ray. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So now you really need to think about this thing. Mm. Give me Revelation 12 verse 11. I'm just going to massage the topic. Revelation 12 verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Uh, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They did what? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's talking about Esau right here, the white man. We overcame, we are going to overcome the white man by the blood of the Lamb. We overcame Pharaoh by the blood of the what? <coughs> the Lamb. Oh God. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read the part again. Revelation to talk is living. Come on. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb uh -huh. and by the word of their testimony. Right. And they loved not their lives unto the dead. They, they did not love their lives unto the dead. What does that mean? You decided to reject everything, your lusts, 
You understand the stuff that you love in the world, you rejected all of them for the love of the most high God. That's what it means, it says, they did not love their lives unto death. You love them, your, your old self in the world unto death. So much so that you don't want to keep God's commandments. No, no, you better let the black man go and be an Israelite, okay? That's what he said right there. We overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That's coming. That's the, pro this is the beginning of it. But what happened during the time of Egypt, that's the same thing. It was what happened in Egypt was symbolic of what would happen when Christ returned, when would Christ would show up on the scene during the time of Rome. And guess what? Before the second coming, we are going to overcome him by the blood of the lamb. The sacrifice that Christ made. Christ our Passover, which was sacrificed for us. Okay? Go ahead. Go back to Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Verse 13. Come on. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon your houses where you are. Uh -huh. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Watch this. Give me second Ezra 15. Second Ezra 15, verse 11. Second Ezra 15, verse 11. Read. But I will bring them with a mighty hand. I will what? But I will bring them with a mighty hand. This is future prophecy now. Where we are. Come on. And they stretch out arm. Rain. And smite Egypt with plagues as before. I'm going to smite Egypt with plagues as before. Come on. As before and will destroy all the land they run. He says he's going to destroy Egypt with plagues as before. So the before is what we're reading. The after is what's coming. You see that thing? And guess what? When the plagues come, which the plagues have already started, by the way, I hope you brothers and sisters are awake. This coronavirus going on, this is the beginning. The plagues were reading, that's the plagues. What happened after the plagues was done? The final plague today is what? World War Three. The nations must kiss the missile. They must hug the missile. That's what's coming. So what we are reading here, the plagues going on, the plagues are already going on. They started already. So this is spiritual. Anytime it's tea time, just don't be sleeping. You understand? Anytime it's tea time, just watch the news and see what's going on. Something going on in the news. Okay? Go back to Exodus 12. Read Exodus 12 verse 24 now. Exodus 12 verse 24. Come on. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. You see that? And to thy sons forever, your children. Read on. And it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. When ye come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he had promised, Read. that ye shall keep the service. Read. The service is the Passover. Come on. And it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. When your children shall say unto you. When your children shall say unto you. So when you say unto us, the children be asking us questions. Read that again. Exodus 12, verse 26. Come on. And it shall come to pass. When your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by the service? What mean ye by the service? Come on. That ye shall say, mm -hmm. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's person. It is the what? It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. That's the same thing we read in verse 13. Same thing we read, you understand, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. Go ahead. Then ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. This is what we're going to tell our children is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. The sacrifice of the Lord. You understand? You see, that's some heavy. You see, when Moses told us this thing, we just thought, hmm, what is Moses talking about? He says, it is the sacrifice of the Lord. The sacrifice of the Lord. It's Passover. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff right there. Go ahead. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel. He did what? Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel. He passed over. Passed over. That's why we call it the Passover. Read on. When he smote the Egyptians uh -huh. and delivered our houses. He delivered our houses. Guess what? He's going to deliver our spiritual houses this day. That's, what is, that's what's going on right now. Spiritually, we are being delivered. Physically, we are going to be delivered. 
the physical deliverance is coming. Right now is the spiritual deliverance. Read. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. They did what? And the people bowed the head and worshipped. That's what we're doing right now. Go ahead. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. Read. And it came to pass uh -huh. that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne Come on. unto the firstborn of the captain that was in the dungeon Ready. and all the firstborn of the captain. You see what the Lord did? Be we at the Passover, we ate the Passover. Midnight, that was a great cry. When the people was crying because they lost their, their firstborns, guess what the Lord did? Take everything they got. Take their garments, take their gold, their jewels, take everything. When we left Egypt, we was dressed like the Egyptians. The best linen, the best clothes, everything. Yes, we was rich when we left Egypt. We didn't look like ragamuffins. Go ahead. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, and all his servants, mm -hmm. and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. Right. But there was not a house where there was not one day. You see that thing? Come on. Also, and he called for Moses and Aaron by night yeah. and said, Rise up and take you forth from, my, from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as he have said. He said, Now go, go, get out of here, come on. Also, take your flocks and your herds yeah. as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. So he said, Bless me as well, while you we are at it, come on. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people. Yeah that they might send them out of the land of Egypt in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. They didn't want to die no more. Guess what? You ever notice? Let me show you like this is all spiritual. <clears throat> you see the December demonic days, okay? All these gathering, the Easter and all that stuff. The highest numbers of the COVID-19 is reported among which people? Us. You know what they are doing? They are blaming us. Oh yes. They are blaming us for the stuff. The same way they were blaming us in Egypt, they are blaming us today. Same thing going on. They were blaming us back then. They say, you are the reason why these plagues are going on. They are blaming us today because of the COVID. They say, no, black people, you are too much. You are always gathered together. That's the same spirit. Same spirit. Go ahead. Verse 34. Uh -huh. And the people took the dough. Exodus chapter 34. Come on. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. The people took their dough before it was leavened. That's why we have unleavened bread. Because at midnight, we left. Before we left, we robbed them first, though. Go ahead. Their needy clothes uh, being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. Come on. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed the Egyptians jewels of silver. They took from the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold, jewels of gold, and ring clothes, clothes. We were wearing like the Egyptians. Right. And the and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. We require those things because it's ours. Right. And they spoiled the Egyptians. We spoiled them. We took everything they got. While they was crying. Right. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth. About 600,000 of goods that were men beside children. 600,000 men. The army of the Lord out of Egypt. Right. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. The other nations, because the other nations was there in slavery as well. But the majority was us. Right. And the mixed multitude went Just like up. today, just like today. Come on. And the mixed multitude went up also with them. Uh -huh. And plants and herds, even very much cattle. Right. And they baked unleavened cakes of their dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. They did what? And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth <coughs> out of Egypt. Uh -huh. For it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither have they prepared for themselves any good. You see that thing? All oh, praise to the most like God. Give me First Corinthians 11 verse 23. Before you get me there, um, sisters, could you prepare the wine and all that? We need to break bread, okay? We need to break bread. Alright? We need to break bread.
First Corinthians 11:23. First Corinthians 11:23. For I have received the Lord, that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, should pray. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death to be come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discern the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 All praise to the Lord.